week we're going to look at coastal environments and particularly focus on the natural processes which keep them functioning how they normally would. So I'm going to highlight two of our local beaches, um, Cronulla, and we're going to look at Botany as well. So you can see on the satellite image here that there's a lot of different factors at play that influence the coastal environment, both physical and human. Um, at Cronulla, we've got a large urban area that's right up against the beach, and um, that has implications for the environment, as well as some of the um, new urban areas that are being developed um, behind the beach zone, such as Green Hills Estate. Um, the other factors that we need to look at is the limited amount of natural vegetation that's still left on the dune, and also the um, amount of industrial um, development um, over the years that has been around on Cronulla's beaches and behind in the high dune zone. The natural processes that we're going to focus on though are the um, factors which cause the environment to function and also change in a natural way. That includes looking at uh, the, the physical environment where we look at um, wind, wave action and what role they play in the um, the formation and changing of a coastal dune, but also the way that the um, uh, the living creatures play a role, plants and animals. So the image that you should see now, I've um, labelled it with two arrows to show the dominant wind direction. The majority of the time, the wind dominant wind direction at Cronulla and um, Port Botany is going to be from a southeasterly direction. So we name a wind from where it comes from, and that means it's blowing from the southeast and moving towards the beach. And as the wind blows in that direction, it'll also form waves. And I've drawn a couple of really um, scientifically drawn waves there, just to show you the angle that the waves are coming in on. So the wind and wave action is really important in helping establish a coastal dune. This diagram, which is a cross section um, from a transect from the, the active beach zone right through to the hind dune at the back of the dune area. Now that dune would not exist if there wasn't um, predominant winds and waves all pushing sand to the one spot. Um, and you can see that it does build up and acts as a bit of a, um, a barrier to the inland areas. So a coastal dune is simply an accumulation of sand. The first process that I'd like to have a look at with you is the accretion cycle. The accretion cycle is simply the net gains and losses of sand on a coastal dune ecosystem. So a lot of uh, factors will bring sand towards the beach and a lot of factors will take it away. The wave action um, is one of those. So with a um, constructive wave, which is a small wave which spills up the beach, it will actively add sand grains to the um, coastal dune by depositing them and as they move away they will um, again find sand grains from an offshore bar, they will erode them from the offshore bar, transport them through the wave and then deposit them on shore, thereby actively building up the coastal dune. Another form of wave is a destructive wave and these ones we normally associate with uh, large storm surges, um, particularly east coast lows off beaches like um, Cronulla. Now these waves sort of have a claw-like um, uh, look to them, I guess, when they're crashing down on a beach. They're very destructive, very scary looking at times, and they'll often have um, the, the color of sand in them because they've mixed up so much sand. What they will do is they'll actually erode sand from the beach, they will transport it offshore and they will deposit it on the offshore bar. So a destructive wave um, will lead to a, 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 sorry, a destructive wave will lead to a loss of sand on a beach while a constructive wave will add to the beach um, building and there'll be a net gain. All right, so we've got a bit of a panorama view of the bay here. And what's really important about this site is that it's fairly protected from large storm surges. And that's because it is embayed. I don't know if you can see right in the background at all, but you've got the uh, entrance to the bay, Botany Bay, and we've got Kernel to the south. And that might be another location I can try and take you to later on. So, 
What we see here, because it's so protected, and I'll try and get it as close as I can, is very small waves. A lot of the wave energy that usually takes place on a coastal beach um, isn't in operation here at, at um, Botany Bay, just because it's so protected from the um, conditions um, that would normally create larger waves. So these very small waves, which sort of spill up the beach, Okay, they spill up the beach rather than coming like a clawed, um, a clawed hand grasping at the beach. These are what we call constructive waves. And what they would normally do is take sand grains from out there somewhere in the water and bring them up and locate them on the beach here. And that's how the beach actually builds up. So through this process, The next process I'd like to talk to you about is um, longshore drift. And much like um, constructive and destructive waves, longshore drift um, can add or remove sand from a coastal dune environment. So essentially, coast, uh, sorry, longshore drift is the movement of sand along the beach. And the diagram that you should see on the screen has a long zigzag pattern across it. And that zigzag is trying to show you that movement of the sand grains. Essentially what happens is that when the waves come in at the, to the beach at an angle because of the prevailing winds, they push sand grains onto the beach. So they transport them and deposit them onto the beach. And then the line um, which represents the, the wave coming straight back down is where the wave is pulled back down by gravity. Now as the um, wave moves up the beach at an angle and then gets pulled straight back down to the ocean by gravity, it constantly moves sand grains with it and they move in that zigzag pattern. So along the east coast of Australia, in beaches like Cronulla or the ones at Botany, Brighton the Sands, um, the, the pattern of longshore drift, um, sorry, the direction of longshore drift generally means that it's flowing north. So sand grains will start at the southern end of the beach and through longshore drift migrate their way towards the um, northern end of the beach. So I wanted to talk to you about a natural process which happens on coastal beaches, which is called longshore drift. And essentially longshore drift is all about how sand grains move along a beach. They don't stay in one place. And that's due to the waves uh, transporting the, the, uh, the sand grains. In this case on the east coast of Australia, those sand grains would move from the southern end of the beach through wave action, they'll eventually migrate to the northern end of the beach and maybe even around some headlands and potentially go in a circular current around Australia. So, as you can see, these waves are coming in on the beach. You might be able to tell they're actually coming in at a slight angle. And I'll step back because I'm about to get my feet wet. But these waves are sort of coming in at this sort of southeasterly angle. They are coming onto the beach, spilling, and then when they go back down into the water, they go perpendicular to the beach. That means they go straight back down, not at that south easterly angle again. And that's just due to gravity. So what causes these particular waves to, to initially crash up the beach in the south easterly angle? Probably the dominant winds, but there's also a bit of refraction from uh, the wave energy bending. So one of the things I wanted to show you with longshore drift, or try and show you today, is how those sand grains actually move. So what I'm going to do is take my my foam dice because that's the lightest thing I could find at home and we might start down the southern end of the beach and see if it's true if this as our mock sand grain moves uh, northwards up the beach and if I lose control of this I might have to go into the water and grab it out. So here we go, we come a bit further down to the southern part of the beach where we might be able to see those waves as they're coming in, they're coming in at an angle to the beach. So here we go. We're going to chuck our foam ball in and see what happens. So it's coming in with this way. So I'm just marking on the beach here where we entered. Already you can see from where it's entered, it's moved up the beach. The 
the wave comes out up at an angle, picks up the sand grain, aka the foam cube. The foam cube then gets pushed backwards and forwards along the beach from our starting point. And as very, you know, as it moves, it's moving very slowly, but it is going in a zigzag pattern. So it moves up the beach, getting pushed by the waves coming in at an angle. And each time it gets pushed at that angle, it moves northwards along this beach. All right, again, this is our starting point. So this is how far in just the last 30 seconds or so that this foam cube has moved up the beach. If I was to estimate this, and I'm just gonna pick it up now, that's probably a good 20 meters. So you could probably calculate the distance that it's moved um, and the speed it's moved, sorry, um, just by those bits of information. So just to finish off talking about some of the physical processes that occur on a coastal ecosystem, um, I just thought I'd touch on some of the basic processes that you've heard of before, like the water cycle. So obviously being a coastal area, it's quite close to the ocean and it will usually experience um, high levels of evaporation as well as precipitation as well. So um, I suppose what we're going to look at in our next video is what happens at different stages of the um, sand dune as you move inland, like one of the earlier diagrams in this video. And what I'd, um, I'm going to point out to you is exactly how much water is used or received at each stage of the sand dune and how the different um, exposure to the elements such as rainfall, um, level of sunlight and solar radiation and salt spray can actually have an impact on the plants and animals that live there in quite a natural way, um, quite different from the impact humans have. So um, just wanted to touch on the fact and remind you that some regular processes like food webs, water cycles and nutrients continue to cycle within an ecosystem such as a coastal one as well. See you in the next video.